The Rosetta Stone's discovery in 1799 allowed archaeologists to understand hieroglyphics in ancient Egypt. For most, this was an incredible thing, but for some, it led and continues to lead to horror. Why? Because they can now fully understand just what kind of curse they've unleashed on their souls by desecrating tombs. In many cases, the curses appear to have affected not the archaeologists themselves, but their families. There is only once catch not all of the effects of curses have been revealed just yet. The man who cursed his family and only realized too late. Zahi Hawass, the former Egyptian Minister of State for Antiquities Affairs and one of the most experienced archaeologists in the world, published the book The Valley of the Golden Mummies in the year 2000. In this book, he recounts the tragic tale of a young archaeologist who cursed himself and his family. It all started when Hawass and the young archaeologist whom Hawass kept anonymous were excavating what was once a thriving Egyptian town called Terenuthis. Eventually, they discovered a tomb filled with artifacts. Hawass and the other archaeologists were astounded with their discovery. Hawass decided to remain at the excavation site while the other archaeologists decided to bring the artifacts to researchers. But when the archaeologist arrived at the drop-off point, he received terrible news. His cousin had died suddenly. The archaeologist was devastated, but he thought that it was a coincidence instead of a curse. One year later to the date, the archaeologist had moved on to another project when he received some more heartbreaking news. His uncle had also died suddenly. Now the archaeologist was beginning to question if tomb curses were real. Another year passed. The archaeologist spent the entire day of the second anniversary of his transport of artifacts braced for bad news. Then midnight came and he had heard no bad news. But he was still worried that he might wake up to learn that he had lost another family member. So he fell asleep filled with dread. The next morning he woke up, called his family and was relieved when he learned that no one had died the previous day. He figured that there truly was no curse and that it had been a coincidence all along. The third anniversary of the archaeologist transporting the artifacts came. He was no longer worried and continued with his latest project. Then he got a call that chilled him to his core. His aunt had also died suddenly. If anything, it seemed like the curse had been toying with him, giving him a false sense of security by skipping one year. Soon, the archaeologist was back in the field. He was excavating another site nearby the site of his previous discovery. This time, he was extremely careful before entering the tomb. He carefully read all of the inscriptions on the wall. When he translated one passage, the events of the last three years all made horrifying sense. It said, All people who enter this tomb, who will make evil against this tomb and destroy it, may the crocodile be against them in the water and snakes against them on the land. May the hippopotamus be against them in the water, the scorpion on land. This tomb was from the same era as the previous tomb. It's likely that the previous tomb contained a similar curse, which he had failed to notice. And now, three of his family members were dead. The sarcophagi protected the gods who will punish the trespassers. In late 2020, archaeologists discovered 160 coffins, better known as sarcophagi, that had never previously been unearthed in Saqqara, an ancient city of the dead in Egypt. When the archaeologists uncovered the location of one sarcophagus in what was once a mastaba or an above-ground tomb, they discovered just who lay within. The inscription stated that they had entered the tomb of Vizier Ankhmahur, an official of the pharaoh. And then they translated the curse. It said that anyone who desecrated the tomb would have the same damage happen to their homes. Then it said that the archaeologists would be filled with a terrible fear of seeing ghosts. Finally came the final and most chilling words. It stated that the gods would come down and wring their necks in the same manner as that of a goose. The curse also offered the archaeologists a deal for leaving what they had discovered in place. It said that those who were pure and did not desecrate could count on Akmahor's defense when they faced the god Osiris before the court of the Egyptian underworld. Despite these warnings, the archaeologists proceeded to remove the sarcophagus. It's been almost two years since this took place and none of the archaeologists have had their houses desecrated. None have said that they've been filled with the fear of ghosts. And most importantly, none of the archaeologists have been found dead with necks wrung like birds. But who knows? 
perhaps this is a curse that takes time to wreak its revenge. That definitely seems to be the case with the next curse. The Med Explorer Who Violated a Tomb and Lost the Person He Cherished Most In 1923, Herbert Eustace Winlock was working in Egypt on behalf of New York City's Metropolitan Museum of Art, more commonly known as the Met. The Met was dependent on Winlock to make a major discovery so that they could gain an Egyptian artifact collection that rivaled that of the British Museum. Winlock was facing tremendous pressure and was keen to make a name for himself. The previous year, British archaeologist Howard Carter had discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun. And then his efforts paid off. In the North Assaif Necropolis, Winlock uncovered the entrance to the tomb of a high-ranking official from the Middle Kingdom named Keti. Keti may have not been a pharaoh, but Winlock knew that the tomb must have contained a number of astounding treasures. He was determined to get the seal open and explore inside. But when the entire text of the tomb was translated, Winlock learned of the curse. It said the following, As for any dissident who will overturn the endowment, after this which he has heard, his name will not exist. He will not be buried in the necropolis. He will be cooked together with criminals, who the god has planted obstacles against. His local god will reject him. Unlike some members of the expedition, Winlock was not at all superstitious. He laughed at the idea of an angry god cooking him with other criminals. He proceeded to open the tomb. When the insides had been cleared of traps and other dangers, Winlock invited his family to view the interior. His wife Helen and his two daughters, eight-year-old Francis and four-year-old Barbara, nervously crept into the tomb. With only lanterns to light the inside, the space was incredibly scary for the girls. But their father assured them that it was entirely safe. He failed to mention the curse because there could be no such thing. At first, everything was fine with the Winlocks. The treasures within Keddie's crypt were catalogued and taken back to the Met. Herbert Eustace Winlock continued to rise through the ranks of the Met until he finally accepted a position as the museum's director in 1932. In 1935, tragedy struck. Winlock's eldest daughter, Frances, began complaining of a fever. The girl was now 21 years old and strong. The family assumed that it was just the flu and that her symptoms would soon pass. But as the days went by, her fever rose and she became even more ill. Soon, she was dead. The doctors confirmed that she had died of tuberculosis. Could the Keddie tomb curse have played a role in Francis Whitlock's death? It's impossible to say for sure, but the death was highly unusual. According to the National Library of Medicine, by 1935, deaths from tuberculosis had almost halved from its peak fatality rate in 1921. And Frances, as a 21-year-old woman, was not the kind of person who commonly died of tuberculosis. As with other diseases, tuberculosis is more fatal to older people. It is also important to note that the curse upon Keddie's tomb mentions that violators will be cooked, and one of tuberculosis's key symptoms is fever. So, was that the manifestation of the curse? If the curse did take Francis, then why didn't it take Herbert Whitlock, his wife, or his youngest daughter? Herbert died at the age of 65 in the year 1950. That was not especially old, but it was by no means young. Perhaps Francis found an object inside the tomb and pocketed it, thereby invoking the curse upon her specifically. 